China is sinking. Why 45% of urban cities are in danger? Over 45% of China's major cities are experiencing serious sinking problems, which are also known as land subsidence. These problems are causing the cities to sink lower and lower. It is important to note that China is currently going through this big event. This terrifying tendency has a significant impact on the people of the country, as well as the economy and the infrastructure of the nation. Subsidence in China is mostly caused by the extraction of an excessive amount of groundwater, which is the fundamental source of the phenomenon. The rapid expansion of urban areas and the development of industrial operations are two factors that might be ascribed to the ever-increasing need for water. It is necessary to extract vast quantities of groundwater through pumping in order to fulfill this requirement. This process leads to a decrease in the amount of water that is found beneath the surface. Over the course of time, this causes the soil to get compacted, which in turn causes the land that is located above to sink. Major cities like Beijing, Shanghai, and Tianjin are severely affected by this phenomenon. This is due to the fact that these cities have a considerable amount of water use and a high population density. Several neighborhoods in Beijing, which is the capital of China, have experienced a decline of several centimeters on an annual basis. Beijing is the home of the Chinese government. The fact that the city relies on groundwater for both residential and industrial use is another aspect that contributes to the severity of this situation. The Beijing Institute of Hydrogeology and Engineering Geology says that during the course of the last 20 years, the level of groundwater in Beijing has dropped by more than 13 meters. This information comes from the Institute. As is the case with other cities, Shanghai is vulnerable to sinking because of its location on the coast and the fragile sedimentary ground that it is constructed on. Nevertheless, in spite of the fact that the city has taken measures to lessen the extraction of groundwater, the impacts of actions that took place in the past continue to cause increasing sinking. Over the course of the past century, several areas of Shanghai have undergone a sinking that has reached a height of up to 2.6 meters. In addition, the problem of sinking is exacerbated by increased urbanization and construction activities, both of which are also contributing factors. The extraction of groundwater is one of the contributing reasons. The weight of newly constructed buildings, roads, and other infrastructure exerts pressure on the earth, which causes the sinking process to speed up. This pressure causes the ground to sink more quickly. The problem is significantly more serious than it already is in cities that have big underground networks, such as subways and sewage systems. This is because these cities have more underground networks. To give an example, the city of Tianjin, which is a huge port city, has seen significant sinking as a result of the considerable industrial development and urban expansion that the city has endured. In addition to having severe implications, subsidence can be broken down into a great number of different components. The possibility exists that infrastructure, which includes things like roads, bridges, and buildings, could experience damage. This could lead to an increase in the costs associated with maintenance, as well as an increase in the dangers to public safety. Subsidence can, in certain extreme cases, result in the collapse of structures, putting people's lives in danger. This can happen when the conditions are particularly severe. In order to illustrate this point, the well-known bell tower in Sinan has collapsed as a consequence of subsidence, which has forced costly efforts to stabilize it. Additionally, subsidence has the potential to disrupt drainage systems, which might result in larger floods during periods of intense rainfall. It is especially concerning that this is happening in coastal cities, where the situation is made even worse by rising sea levels as a direct result of climate change. Because of the subsidence that has taken place in Guangzhou, there has been a rise in the number of floods. Certain districts are experiencing waterlogging as a consequence of the heavy rainfall that has taken place. In order to effectively handle the issue of subsidence in China, it is essential to employ a variety of strategies. It is possible to limit the amount of groundwater that is drawn, which is one of the most essential things that can be done. This can be accomplished by implementing more rigorous controls on the amount of water that is consumed by industrial processes and by recycling wastewater, both of which are examples of enhanced irrigation and water management practices. Additionally, the reliance on groundwater can be lessened by investing in alternative water sources, such as desalination facilities. This can help minimize the amount of water that is used. By way of illustration, the city of Shenzhen has made investments in desalination facilities in order to provide an alternative water source and, as a result, lessen the amount of pressure that is placed on groundwater resources. In addition, 
the planning of urban areas plays a significant part in mitigating the negative impacts of subsidence within a given area. The construction of buildings made of lighter materials and the incorporation of additional green spaces are two ways in which the pressure that is exerted on the earth can be reduced. Additionally, the employment of cutting-edge technology, such as satellite imaging, to enhance the monitoring of subsidence can be of assistance in the early identification and prevention of the occurrence. This can be possible through the utilization of these technologies. Several initiatives, like the Smart Cities Project, which makes use of satellite data to monitor subsidence and other urban issues in real time, have been undertaken by the Chinese government. These initiatives are described in more detail below. The public's awareness and the regulations that are passed by the government are both essential components in the successful fight against subsidence. The transmission of knowledge to the general public about the causes and effects of subsidence is one method that can be utilized to fulfill the goal of increasing community involvement in conservation actions. When it comes to water extraction and urban construction, it is possible to enforce legislation at the policy level in order to guarantee that sustainable practices are adhered to. In addition, the government has initiated a program known as Sponge City, which is designed to enhance the management of water in metropolitan areas through the implementation of green infrastructure and permeable surfaces. An increase in water absorption and a reduction in subsidence are the two primary objectives of this initiative. China's fight with subsidence is symbolic of the more serious challenges that nations that are rapidly developing are facing. These nations are facing a variety of challenges. It is of the utmost importance to find a middle ground between the long-term sustainability of the environment and the economic prosperity of the nation. As a result, it is of the utmost importance to take preventative measures in order to forestall the further deterioration of land and to safeguard the future of China's urban landscapes. The reason for this is that the rate of urbanization is still rising steadily in order to underline the necessity of sustainable development and responsible resource management. The lessons that China has learned from its experience with subsidence can serve as a helpful reference for other nations that are encountering difficulties that are analogous to China's situation. This is because China has learned from its experience with subsidence. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.